Hello, this is Theodore Holden again, um, Southeast Texas. And the last year, pretty much I've been tied up with health issues and political issues, and I'm trying to break out of that. You know, get back into my normal thing of renegade science and renegade historiography uh, topics. And I thought I would start with something simple. This has to do with the question of where Venus actually came from and what the blue body in the Shamash glyph actually amounts to. Okay, there's sort of a sort of a controversy involving those topics. And I need to talk about Emanuel Velikovsky. I need to talk a little bit about the basic ideas behind the Ganymede hypothesis. And I need to talk about one of the better class of mathematicians from the last century, which would be Bob Bass, who I used to see at Thunderbolts conferences and things which involved, you know, Velikovsky conferences, um, discussions. And there are two things that um, that Bob Bass w w was notable for uh, as it relates to Velikovsky and the Velikovsky and controversy. Bob Bass claimed that the Titus Bode law of celestial dynamics, which is the law that gives the positions of the bodies in our system, was actually the solution to a dynamical relaxation problem, okay, and here's what that does, it's like, you know, that was the big argument that, that the standard astronomers had used against Velikovsky, they claimed that it would take millions of years, you know, tens of millions of years for our solar system to come to its present configuration and stabilize after anything like the kinds of catastrophes that Velikovsky had described, right, now, you know, if, if you accept Bob Bass's idea, well then, what what he's really claiming is that, like, you know, you can pretty much start the bodies in our system from anywhere, and they would be where they are now within a couple of three or four thousand years. You know, that it wouldn't take millions or tens of millions of years. In other words, uh, there's a method, uh, mathematical method to the madness. Um... Uh, what was the other thing that Bob Bass claimed, which which I pretty much accepted at the time? I mean, it made logical sense, right? It turns out that it doesn't, it doesn't make historical sense, but nonetheless, he claimed that the retrograde spin of Venus could not be primordial, that it had to, to have arisen via interaction with some other body in the system, and that the, that the phase lock between Venus and Earth, that is, <coughs> excuse me, that, that, that is the fact that Venus shows us the same face at inferior conjunctions, indicated that the body in question had to be Earth, right? So that um, Earth and Venus are, are, are sort of a pair. Now, I accepted that, you know, at face value, early on. Again, that turns out not to be correct. Now, you know, the thing that we came to, that Trey McLaughlin and I came to early on trying to figure out the, the, the questions involved in the Ganymede hypothesis was that there were two basic keys to the history and the prehistory of our solar system. The two basic keys are planetary axis tilts number one, and eye size is number two. You know, the old creatures of the Earth all had these same kinds of huge eyes, right? They were living in a dark environment, which is this purple dawn environment that you hear about, you know, like in Greg Jay's videos or that you read about, like on Thunderbolts.info. Um, owls, um, hominids, all of, all of the hominids, Neanderthal, um, deer, um, all of the dinosaurs, every single one of them pretty much, like even, even the flying dinosaurs, even the herbivores, you all have these same kinds of huge eyes, right? Humans and dolphins have the, humans and dolphins ha ha have the smallest relative eye sizes of advanced creatures. The thing about axis tilts resolves the question of, of the 
Shamash glyph and whether the blue body that you see in the Shamash glyph, or at least in some versions of it, was Venus or Neptune. Okay, um, if you look at the uh, at the Wikipedia page on axis tilts, what you see is that you've got two of the bodies in our system, which would be Uranus and Pluto, which have oddball axis tilts, and the rest of the bodies fall into two groups, pretty much. You've got one group, which, you know, which has axis tilts less than 10 degrees, okay? That's what you would expect of a primordial system. That includes the Sun with, an, with a tilt of 7 degrees, Mercury, tilt of almost zero, right? Uh, Venus, tilt of 2.6 degrees, um, our own Moon, tilt of 6.6, 6.7 degrees, right? Jupiter, a tilt of 3 degrees, um, roughly. Okay, and then you've got a second group which includes the former members of the Saturnian system. These are bodies with what I call rough, a, a roughly 26 degree axis tilt from 23 to about 28. From around 23 to about 28, you've got like the Earth at 23.4 degrees. You've got Mars, 25 degrees, Saturn. 26.7 degrees, and Neptune, 28 degrees, right? So from about 23 to about 28 degrees, what I would say roughly 26 degrees is the Saturnian system. These bodies were captured as a group, right? They flew into the plane of the Sun-Jupiter system from the south at, a, at roughly a 26 degree angle, and as the individual bodies you know, were captured by the sun and spun out and began to orbit the way that they do now. Just ordinary gyroscopic force caused them to keep that 26 degree angle of approach in the form of axis tilts, right? That's the reason for the 26 degrees in what once was the the system of bodies which was aligned with the dwarf star, Saturn, okay? Um, now, You've got something which I should have caught, like at least, at least no later than when I started, you know, investigating this thing about axis tilts and Ganymede, right? That says 12, 13 years ago. Okay, this is like a big mea culpa. This should have been obvious, right? I mean, I'm supposed to be good at putting two and two together, and this. Like, I missed somehow or other, right? It's like, you know, partly because of, you know, just generally accepting Bob Bass's idea of, you know, the the, the Earth and Venus being a sort of a pair. Um, and partly because it's not what I was looking for. I mean, you know, I wasn't looking for this in particular. What you see is that... Um, Jupiter and Venus have almost identically the same axis tilt, right? It's like Jupiter's tilt, where is that, like about 3.13 degrees, right? Venus, um, where is that here? Venus, 2.64 degrees. Okay, that's the way they give it now. They used to give it as like minus 177 degrees, right? So they've changed the way they present that on, on the wiki page now. Um, if you... See, I didn't catch that, right? I, I, I mean, obviously, what, what you should be looking at is the, dis, is the angular distance from, from a perpendicular to the system. Right, and if you look at it that way, which, which is what the wiki page shows now, then what you get is that uh, Jupiter and Venus have the same tilt to within less than half of a degree, right? So that um, Velikovsky claimed that there the, had the, 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 the been some sort of a big question. He, he, he devoted like a number of pages, uh, at least a dozen pages or so, to this question. He said that uh, there had been a question in his mind early on as to whether Venus had originated with Saturn or with Jupiter, right? And he eventually, see, he, he decided in favor of Jupiter and he said it was 
you, you know, decisive just from his own studies of, of you know, literature and, and mythology, right? Um, but nonetheless, I think that just from the axis tilts here, you can see the, the, that if Venus was going to have arisen with something, then, then the something was going to be Jupiter, not Saturn, okay? Um, the retrograde spin, where does that come from? You know, it turns out Bob Bass was wrong about that. Uh, okay, and the, 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 this also threw me off. But, you know, what, what you really have to think about is gears, right? When two wheels turn on gears, right, they spin in different directions. It's like, if you think of Jupiter being, having almost no axis tilt, you know, very low axis tilt, and basically... Venus being ejected from the equatorial region of Jupiter, then, you know, you're going to get the same effect as you would have with gear, with gears as, as Venus was ejected, it, it, it turned the wrong way. You understand what I'm saying? So, I mean, that would give you a retrograde spin. You don't need entanglement with um, Earth for that. Now, the 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 phase lock, I think, can... You know, that, that that can come from Earth and Venus being close to each other for a long period of time after the flood, after the catastrophes that Velikovsky describes. Okay, um, that, that I don't think you need any magic to explain. But, you know, I, th I think just this thing that you get from the axis tilts is decisive. I mean, that, that that's going to say, see, it's like um, Velikovsky had said that you know, the, the mythological records, you know, like the Greeks claiming that Athena had had been born from the head of Zeus, right? It's basically saying that Venus was ejected, that, 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 that's their way of saying that Venus was ejected from Jupiter. You know, in other words, they describe their, their, their cosmology in their language, not ours, right? Uh, I, I mean, they're not talking about you, you, you know, like the former dwarf star throwing off a body like Venus just to relieve electrical stress, right? They're, they're talking about, you know, goddess being born from the head of one of the former chieftain gods. Now, the Thunderbolts group, including F. Cochran and Walthorn Hill and, and a few others, David Talbot, have been working from iconography, which shows this alignment between Saturn and Saturn and, and a blue body, which they assume was Venus, right? And it's that assumption that, that I have problems with, okay? Um, that this, this glyph that you see, the, in particular, the Shamish glyph, shows a golden body in, in the background, which, is, which would be Saturn and the blue body, and then Mars, and then presumably the person seeing all of this standing on Earth, right? Um, and, you know, because this body, and, and some of the iconography and some of the artwork that you see, particularly Egyptian artwork, shows as blue, right? They're assuming that was Venus, right? And, and Possibly that they're also thinking of Earth and Venus being a sort of a pair from, you know, descriptions like that of Bob Bass, right? So, so you think of Earth and Venus being a pair. And they're assuming that this body that you see in the Shamish glyph was blue, right? And like I said, you see the color blue in, in some of the artwork. They're assuming this body was Venus. But Venus does not have the, not only does it have exactly the, the axis tilt that you would expect if it came from Jupiter, not Saturn, it doesn't have this 26 degree axis tilt, right? And, and, and the hell of it is that you've got the one other body in our system that does, which would be Neptune, okay? And, and Neptune, um, like I said, answers the mail as far as what this blue body and, and the Shamash glyph amounted to. Um, the people in, in the Thunderbolts group claim that the blue color that you see is not a native color of Venus. It's from, 
you know, Venus in native colors are going to be sort of a pale, sort of a pale off-white or something, reddish tinges, right? I mean, it was described by the Romans as being a, a, of a bloody rather than a fiery redness, okay, early on, right? But the, there's no way to make blue out of Venus. So they're claiming that, like, there is, if you, if you look at, you know, plasma physics phenomena, you, you know, Venus being lit up by the... By, by the Birkeland current between Saturn and uh, and Venus, okay, or, or between Saturn and this blue body that you see in the Shamash glyph, but like I said, it doesn't work. I mean, you've got you've got another body sitting there which does answer the mail, you, you, you know, as for being part of the Saturnian system with with the proper axis tilt for that, and then you've got um, Venus having exactly the same axis tilt to within less than half a degree of Jupiter, and, you know, that says that, like, Venus was part of the Sun-Jupiter system, uh, and Neptune was part of the Saturn-Neptune-Mars-Earth system, and, like, well, how did Venus and Earth end up together then? Well, the answer is Bob Bass, right? You, you, you know, you, you know, the Titus Bode Law is a solution to a dynamical relaxation system, and you could start them, you could start these bodies anywhere, and they would end up where they are now. It wouldn't take that long to happen. Like I say again, that was the big argument against Velikovsky in the 1950s, and it turns out to be bogus. So that that's the thought for the day. Okay, I will try to get to a couple of other things like this, trying to get you know away from health and, and political issues here and. Get back to my normal sort of a thing, right, which is renegade science and renegade uh, historical studies. Take care.